Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Tularean Community College's video and about double masters in general and why I think it is not investable. Now, a lot of you are confused because you have one mind, one track mind. I can say something is not investable, but still think it's really great for players, right? And many times it's the opposite, right? So if something is not investable, it probably is really good for players. If people are just investing or hoarding the product, it is not good for players, but it is likely that the product might increase in price. Um, one clear example of this is supply and demand, right? If there is very low supply of any product and it's a wanted product, then the price gets higher. So that's good for investors, bad for players who want the product. And this doesn't just apply to magic, this applies to basically everything. So let's talk about double masters. The danger behind double masters is that there might be a triple masters in the future. Double masters has just blown out. And I you know, oh, look at this box value and look at this card. Until you actually sell a box, you haven't made money. Until you actually sold something, um, you haven't made money. And someone who has sold boxes, and I still, I refuse to sell any sealed product today, um, it's very difficult to sell sealed product, like incredibly difficult. And I would advise you before spending $1,300 on sealed double masters, maybe just try to sell one. You might lose money, of course, because you're gonna buy at a price and then with margins and eBay and shipping and your own time, you're gonna find that there's lots of scammers. And secondly, what you're gonna find is Wow, customer car can be mean. Like if you've ever worked in retail at a restaurant or you know that sometimes you can have really bad customers for no reason. Maybe they're in a bad mood or something bad has happened to them that day. They woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Uh, get prepared for really bad customers on sealed boxes when you sell it to them. Even Rudy had a video about all the people complaining about him. And that's not atypical, right? That's a very typical response to people who sell sealed boxes because if, for whatever reason, again, non-logical, does not make sense to me, but if you bought a sealed box and you opened it and you didn't get the cards you were expecting to get or the value, I guess, you were expecting to get, which is the majority of boxes today, you're kind of, you're going to kind of get angry. I understand it. You're going to get kind of angry at the uh, store or the person who sold you said box. Um, so selling boxes is a very difficult um, thing to do, and it's largely based on reputation. So someone like Rudy will have a much easier time selling boxes than someone like me or someone like you who doesn't really have the feedback, the eBay reviews, or the cachet, if you will, to sell the boxes. Um, but even Rudy gets returns. Like, he does. He's mentioned that before. So back to um, when you buy a product, you always have to be concerned about what is the price for the product I'm buying. Like I said with Dragon Maze, it's one of the most terrible products in existence. If you were buying it as a store for $78 a box, ooh, that's bad. But if you were buying it for $18 a box on clearance, ah, I mean, there's probably enough shock lands randomly in the product to make it worth your while. But then again, not a great product, but if you bought it for $18, it becomes a acceptable product or a okay product because you can definitely sell it for like 50 bucks right so it's all about the price you buy in is the most important price point not necessarily the price you can sell at because again fees shipping and your own time most people do not calculate their own time into this that's why i no longer sell magic cards it's just too much of a hassle and honestly, my time is more valuable than shipping or sorting or whatever I'm doing with Magic Card. It, if you do the simple math of how much I get paid per hour, it does not make sense for me. And it doesn't make sense for, I would say, the majority of professionals. Does it make sense for a lawyer or a doctor or, or a business owner to sell Magic Cards? No. Because that business, let's say... Um, Let's say I charge $250 for consultation, which I do, and people pay that. Well, in the time it takes me to ship a few boxes, I could have just done an extra hour of consultation. And there's no way that the profit, the profit 
of those boxes would come close to the 250, right? Even if I was selling dual land, so the calculation I did was I was selling dual lands, and then I, of course, would add a profit. But then I was like, wait a second, this is profit is like less money than I make per hour. It's more difficult work. It's more boring, and there's higher risk. There's no risk in my consultation, right? I get paid upfront. So back to uh, double masters. Is it worth investing? Blank no, it's not investing because triple masters is on its way. So if you know anything about marketing, you know once they produce a better product, um, the product in all definitions is better. It includes a lot of the reprints of the old master products. I, I would and I would actually say it's probably better than Ultimate Masters straight up. Um, straight up, it's just better. I mean, you can tell by the, the price tag. Is it better than Iconic Masters? Yeah, Thought Seize is also in this. So, I mean, as of the recording of the video, it's not confirmed, but there was a, um, a product. The VIP box has Thought Seize on the back of it. So it would be kind of crazy for it not to be in the product. I mean, what products, Double Masters is the best product Magic is going to make today. It blows out every other Masters, even Modern Masters, original, given the price tag is not worth opening compared to this. This product has doubling season. I mean, it has all the good cards from all the Master sets in the past. It has all the good cards. So you think the next Master set won't, have to one up it of course it has to one up it it's just simple marketing like it's super obvious to me that triple masters is already on its way and then triple masters will be triple the but you're only reprinting the same cards over and over again even mystery booster boxes which is 2000 reprints um and that just happened a few months ago they contain a lot of the same cards nine percent of the cards are identical nine percent and this is a reprint product like a month or two ago. 9%. And we're not talking about commons. We're talking about rares and mythics here. We're talking about the chase cards. And it's like, whoa. I mean, think about 20. I, I, we're in COVID, by the way. So like game stores are not open. Paper Magic is not being played as much. I mean, there's really no reason for you to buy Paper Magic if you can't use it. You can just play on MTG Arena. At least you can get a game there and not get COVID. So, I mean, think about it. We're in COVID right now time. So financially, I know that uh, our money is getting... Oh, man. Uh, the, the reason that this may seem like a good deal and the reason that people are buying Magic cards, it's not Magic cards alone. Let me make this very clear. Pokemon has increased way more money. Pokemon has done way better than Magic the Gathering will ever hope to do. I have this um, box, and I never could sell it. It was called Burning Shadows. For what I mean, I just couldn't sell the set. And I bought it for $78 a box, and I was trying to sell it for $100, and I couldn't sell that, and I just have a bunch of them. Right now, they're on, their finished sales is $200. One day I woke up, and all this garbage became treasure. I was like, whoa. What just happened? It's because so much money is being pumped into the economy for unemployed people. There's 50 million unemployed people. They're all getting $1,000 plus a, a week. A week, 600 from the federal government and 400 on average from their state unemployment. Then we're getting a stimulus check. We, got, we already got one for $1,200. we are going to get another one for $1,200. And so that's another $2,400. So in five months... You get 2400 plus 1000 a week, uh, 52 weeks divided by 4, which 52 divided by 4. Let's say you're unemployed and you're just playing Magic at home. You would get, oh wow, 13. Oh, that's a lot. Um, you would get $13,000 plus another 2400 Let's just call it $16,000. For four months, you got $16,000. That's pretty good. That's $4,000 a month or 40. No, you're getting more than 16000 Hold on. 52 divided by 4 is equivalent to 13 times $1,000 a week. 
plus your 2400. Yeah, 15400, but then we times it by free. Oh, some, something is wrong. Oh, we times it by four. Okay, that's it. Okay, times that by four. And we get, you're getting $61,600 to not work a year on average. And that's assuming we don't get another $1,200 check later on, which we probably would. So that's why cards are inflated like a MF, right? Because Pokemon cards have done way better than Magic. Let me tell you this. If you invested in Pokemon at the same time that you know, these, you're know you investing in this product, you would have made a killing. I should have invested in Pokemon. <laughs> you know, to be quite honest, I own a blanking Pokemon store, but I got rid of Pokemon at the same time I got rid of Magic. I no regrets getting rid of Magic, but I do now regret getting rid of my Pokemon inventory because I could have got way more of the good stuff that's now valuable, like Evolutions. There was this pack called Pokemon Evolutions, and it was basically worthless. They put it in every single product. The pack is now expensive. It's like, whoa, what the blank just happened? Like, this pack used to be the pack that you hated to get. Now it's a pack that you really want all the time. And it's like, wait, I have hundreds of those. <laughs> like, you woke up, I woke up one day, and the things tripled in price. And I'm like, huh, should I keep it? I'm going to open it anyway. Bye, guys.